<clears throat> all right, hey, shalom, Akim, shalom. First and foremost, as always, before I get started, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachah Hakodash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us His truth and the Ruah. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation during the time of Jacob Shubble and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Now, what you just heard me say in the beginning of this video, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahabashai, are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of His beloved Son in the Paleo Hebrew, okay? Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah. The name Yahweh means He is, He to be, or the existing one. Bahashem, Ba means in, Ha means the, and Shem means name. In the name of His Son, Yahabashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua. The name Yahabashai means He delivers, the deliverer, or the Savior, all right, like I said, Bahashem in the name, Racha means spirit, and Kodash means holy, all right, and this video is brought to you through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to continue to prophesy into our nation of the things that are coming down the pipe, and to further speak upon points that not only accompany salvation, but that build up the faith of the hopeful members of the elect that believe in the true doctrine that the Heavenly Father is pushing via His men, all right, that have been endowed this, uh, the secrets, okay, which are the prophets Starting off with the men of Great Millstone, the apostles, the bishops, and the elders, all right, and the men that carry the likewise doctrine, all right. And uh, this will be a quick uh, exhortation, pretty much, regarding, uh, as you can see, the title of this lesson A Lot of Death Will Take Place, okay. And what sparked the title of this lesson was a couple videos that the beloved apostle Racha made. Uh, entitled we don't hate these niggas enough all right we're pretty much the apostle and the other uh beautiful brothers that joined him in that live we're going in on the point of how wicked of a nation our people are okay <coughs> and pretty much just harping upon the point of our people need nothing else but death okay Another uh, lesson that the beloved apostle did was this place out of order, all right? And the one that I really, um, you know, got the inspiration to entitle this lesson, a lot of death will take place is this place is vexing as hell, all right? And pretty much the apostle and the beloved um, elder Damashapat were going in upon the point of whenever we converse with the society and we go into the force of nothing but wickedness, we're constantly bombarded with nothing but um, dead bodies walking, you know? Because that's ultimately the condition of everybody, all right? Just like it tells in Proverbs um, 21 and 16, if I'm not mistaken, he that departeth from the way of understanding remaineth in the congregation of the dead, okay? And that's everybody, okay? Everywhere we go, no matter if it's a grocery store, no matter if we're driving on the freeway, the majority of the people that you see, you know, to the side, to the left, to the right, those are nothing but pieces of stubble that are going to be set on fire in the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Whether it's through a uh, death taking place by a spirit that the Lord puts upon another man, or whether it's through the nuclear destruction that's going to take place, all right, in these latter days that we're living in. OK, this is the reality of what the Heavenly Father has woken us up to. All right. That a lot of death has to take place in order for the Heavenly Father's fear to finally be put upon all flesh. OK. And ultimately, the end goal and the summary of that understanding should give you a sense of being grateful for this truth, man. OK, because we're in the best position possible. OK, the Heavenly Father has put us up on game, so to speak, as to how to be saved from this great tribulation that's going to surpass any kind of judgment that ever took place. OK, and by you having that mindset, you should put yourself in a in a spirit of not only being thankful, but just um, like it tells in Revelation 11 chapter. All right. When. The elect felt the earthquake. They were affrighted. Okay. 
And as a matter of fact, um, before I keep speaking, I want to look up the word affrighted. And then I'll grab a couple of scriptures to bring forth the point. Salakia, affrighted. It says, frighten, terrify, alarm. Okay? And just like it tells in Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, um, knowing the terrors of the Lord, what are we persuaded to do? To persuade other men to get themselves in order before the Heavenly Father starts making these prophecies come, uh, you know, to fruition. Okay? So from there, I want to grab um, the first scripture that I wanted to read. Is in the book of Let me see Second Ezra chapter 7 And it should be around the last verse Right Second Ezra 7 and Let me see here As a matter of fact Let me start at damn. Let me start at 67 this is 2nd Ezra 7, verse 67. For if he shall not multiply his mercies, all right, talking about the Heavenly Father, the world would not continue with them that inherit therein, all right? So if it wasn't for the sure mercy that the Heavenly Father has shown upon not only David, but upon all of our forefathers, okay? Just like it tells in Isaiah, the first chapter, we should have been likened unto Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? Completely swept under the dust and dead okay as a matter of fact everybody should be dead if it wasn't for the sure mercies that the heavenly father has showed upon the upon the nation of israel okay so the water yahweh for sending his son yahweh shai for giving us the blessing to have this grace period okay to justify ourselves and show the heavenly father that we want salvation you know we want to have a kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness okay verse 68 it says and he pardoneth for if he did not so of his goodness, that they which have committed iniquities might be ease of them, the ten thousandth part of men should not remain living. Okay? And being judged, if he should not forgive them that are cured with this word, and put out the multitude of con uh, contentions, there should be very few left peradventure in an innumerable multitude. Okay? And that's why our hope is predicated upon nothing else but upon the word of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, as a matter of fact, uh, real quick, if this wants to load Psalms 130 and just going straight to the point, verse 5 it says, I wait for the Lord Yahweh Bahashimi Hawashai. My soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. Okay. So by us weighing all these points in the balance, by us, you know, being thrown in the society predicated upon nothing but being lovers of their own selves and being completely wicked, that should give us a mindset of putting all of our eggs upon the basket of the word of the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? <clears throat> so from there, going to the next chapter and starting at the first verse, second Ezra chapter 8 and 1, it says, And he answered me, saying, the Most High has made this world for many, okay? And what world is Ezra's talking about? The one that we're living in right now, okay? Where the Heavenly Father has given the blessing to Esau to rule the earth, okay? It's made for many. But like, it's, like the latter end of the verse says, but the world to come for few, all right? And who is that talking about? The 144,000 of the nation of Israel and the great multitude consisting of one third of the nation of Israel. All right. The men, the friends of the prophets, the women and the children. OK, those are the only spirits that are going to make it out alive, man. OK. And I remember the beloved apostle Racha making a point of pie. OK. The heavenly father is only getting 144,000 and one third piece of one pie and he's ditching the rest of the other pies okay because if you have any understanding of the scriptures there's 18 nations okay and out of all these 18 nations out of one the heavenly father is only saving that 
percentage. And the rest of those pies, they're being cast into the lake of fire, man. Okay? This is a point that the apostles, the bishops, and the elders always speak about. All right? But something that Jake doesn't do is envision this in their spirit. They don't meditate upon the fact that very soon a lot of death is going to take place. And just like it tells in Proverbs um, 29 and 16, if I'm not mistaken. Salaki, verse 18. It says, when there is no vision, the people perish. Okay? And real quick, let's look up this word vision. It goes back to the Strong's H, 2377. Chaza, uh, Chazawan. Okay? And it says, vision, oracle, prophecy. Okay? And that's a prophecy that very soon is going to play out, man. All right? And that ultimately shows that a lot of our people that surname themselves after Jacob and they have been enlightened with this truth, really don't understand what they're involved in and truly don't believe upon the word of the Heavenly Father. Okay? And that's why you see all this, you know, turmoil and just damnable heresies coming out of nowhere. Because these people not only err not knowing the scriptures, but they don't believe in them. Okay? So once again, the water Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai for giving us the gift to actually have faith in his word and to hope in it, okay? Because the rest of these other jakes have put themselves in a cushion estate to the point where they don't see the end coming, okay? But we do, man, all right? Going back to 2nd Ezra 8 and 2, it says, I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. Okay? Even so is the course of this present world. There be many created, all right, but few shall be saved. And just like Esau puts a you know, number of how many people are living, Esau says about eight, nine billion people. Well, out of that, a very small number of people are going to make it out alive man okay i gave you the ratio regarding the analogy of the of the pies okay and that also echoes what yahweh Shai said in matthews the 22nd chapter all right there will be many called but guess what only a few are going to be chosen to receive that salvation all right i brought this on myself you brothers you sisters and your children are a part of that multitude that are going to make it up make it up out of here man Okay, but we're about to we're about to experience a time like never before, where death is gonna be playing out everywhere. Okay, Yahweh I As a matter of fact, let me grab that scripture, man. In Matthew's twenty-four, and I think that's twenty-one. Yep, Matthew chapter twenty-four and twenty-one. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No nor ever shall be, okay? And of course, that was speaking about 70 AD where <coughs> Jerusalem was ransacked by the Roman Empire, okay? But what's about to take place in the future of this generation? That's what Yahweh Shai was ultimately alluding to, man, okay? A time like never before. Some of the prophets fell sick due to the vision that the Heavenly Father showed them, all right? Habakkuk said that he feared at the speech, all right, that the Heavenly Father was giving him. And that's the kind of mindset and emotion that you should feel whenever you see the prophets out there on the highways and byways proclaiming the name and the legacy that the Heavenly Father comes in, man. All right. So that's pretty much all I wanted to speak about in this uh, lesson, man, just, you know, Meditating upon the fact that very soon we're going to be in the midst of destruction, okay? But as long as we hope and predicate ourselves upon the foundation of Yahweh Shai and His Word, we're going to be okay. Just like it tells in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge is what's going to keep us stable in those times. And keeping the fear of the Lord because that is the treasure that He's blessed us with, okay? A characteristic that He looks for 
within his men. All right. And Abaratas on myself and you brothers, you know, <coughs> according to the will of the Heavenly Father, we keep that to the end, man. All right. Because that time is coming. A lot of moves are being made regarding prophecy with these other nations, all right, getting in a tumult to confound this whore, okay? As well as Esau doing his thing, okay, of playing deception, all right, being that serpent of beguiling society into taking a CHIP, all right, through the notion of making it look like it's something beneficial, all right? But that's when Esau is going to put everybody in a trick bag. And that's where you're going to see why the scriptures call him Satan, the devil, and the serpent. Okay? But the heaven, like I said earlier, the Heavenly Father has put us in game to prepare ourselves for this time. And that is putting the armor of righteousness in order to dodge the wiles of the devil and all the devices that he's played out to deceive the very elect. But just like the 24th uh, verse of Matthew 24 says, all right, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. All right. But they're not going to be, <coughs> excuse me, they're not going to be deceived because those, all right, spirits have been programmed to not bow down their knees to the image of Baal. Okay. So Lord's will, this video was edifying, exhorting to you, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to speak upon that point. Um, I was just at the plantation listening to the beloved Apostle Rachaz video and it it really sunk in on me regarding the you know the prophecy of every a lot of death happening, you know? The prophecies speak about it, but it when it happens on a physical uh base, it's gonna, you know, do no justice compared to what the scriptures speak about. Alright? So with that giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Bahasham Yahawashai, Bahasham Rachaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word and that rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the elect. Shalom.